Hello everybody, it's Terry here with the Drone Calf. Of course, of course. Have I got a story for you? Have you got a clue yet? The title, all the little stuff. Well, we talk a lot about technical stuff here on the Drone Calf. We talk about, um, you know, the mechanics of flying and regulations and, you know, we get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of that kind of stuff. But, uh, we also, of course, talk about camera settings and ND filters and that kind of stuff. But let's kind of get a little deeper into thinking about your shot more. And um, today I want to talk about how your shots, it doesn't necessarily mean how short, how small of a shot, how long of a shot, whatever it is, how it tells a story. All your shots are part of the, your main story. And it's important not to take for granted even a, a shot that only lasts a couple seconds. It's part of telling your overall story. And it can tell a little bit of the story in itself. So there's lots of ways to do that. And you're probably aware of some of these already. It's, I'm not telling you anything brand new. But uh, things like reveals or or you know where you go do, do a crane up and you see a landscape reveal behind the foreground. Yeah, things like that. You can really sort of surprise the audience. You can set a tone. You can set a mood. You can do some amazing stuff. So anyway, if you watched last week's show, uh, I mentioned that I was going on a little road trip. I was hoping to get some flying time in. The logistics didn't work out so good for that. I was really busy. The weather didn't cooperate some of the time. So just some curveballs. But I was able to get some shots that were pretty interesting, and one in particular. And um, this shot I did not do with a drone, but it looks like a drone shot because it was about 300 feet in the air. Well, how would I do that? Well, it's a really tall ladder and a good bounce. No, okay. I was staying on the 30th floor of a condo complex. So it can kind of give you that sort of fake drone shot in a way. It doesn't matter if you're flying a drone, if you're at that altitude, really, because a drone just puts your camera at that altitude, right? So I was able to use, once again, my trusty Osmo Pocket. The Osmo extension rod on a tripod. And so we're going to take a look at this shot. We're going to break it down. Now, I do want to talk just a second about how some of the regulatory stuff does apply to getting a shot like this. Not that there's any legalities or anything, but as part of your training, your education to be a 107 FAA certified um, um, operator, drone operator, you learn a lot about things that you don't think you really need to know. Who needs to know that? Well, you need to know that. One of the biggies is weather. And weather told the story in this particular shot. And once we go through the shot, you're going to see why. You learn how fronts work. You learn how temperature differences between water versus land at certain type, times of the day in certain locales with certain heat uh, uh, effects and things come into play and you can take advantage of that and watch for these things and you'll see opportunities to get some pretty creative shots and pre some pretty interesting stuff that you can use. So to give you uh, uh, again a brief summary, Osmo Pocket ND filter. I think I used an ND32 for that. On a tripod we did an hour-long time-lapse shot but I actually set it up as a motion lapse. So that means if you remember from one of our previous videos, a motion lapse is where the camera sits in one position. The camera doesn't move, but the gimbal is programmed to rotate a certain amount. I shot this um, sort of midday, and the, uh, the angle of the shoot started off basically east, and the camera panned southeast over the uh, course of the, uh, the, the motion lapse timing. Again, it was about an hour at four seconds, gave us 30 seconds of footage. So anyway, let's take a look at that. Then we're gonna take it, break it down step by step in a few steps and look at how that tells a story of the uh, shot. So anyway, hang on, buckle up, put your parachute on, whatever you need to do. This is gonna be fun.
Okay, here right off the bat, this is the first frame of the shot. You can see that storm over to the left, kind of uh, to the north, and it's over land. But see, I'm looking like um, east up the beach here. And the storm initially looked like it was moving toward the ocean. It looks like it was moving toward the right of your frame. But you can see the clouds. There, it was kind of this, this almost a violent, turbulent uh, thing going on. It was really windy uh, where those two fronts were buttoned up against each other. And there was a lot of, lot of drama in that shot. So that's what I wanted to get. I wanted to kind of capture that, that um, kind of looming storm coming over the, over the land mass and kind of moving over toward the uh, beachfront side. So now let's move along a little bit further into the shot. And now you see that motion, you see those clouds, you see that, that turbulence, that, that roiling, but now you start to see some blue sky. Now look here. Now how cool of a surprise was this? Again, I was up really high, and these were some low clouds that just came right over the roof of the building. And that, that looked really close, so it gave some perspective to what was going on. And that, that really, uh, again, was an added surprise to the shot, even for me. And you can see those clouds move out into the distance further. But as we move, we start to see more serenity. We see a calm ocean. We see the skies opening up to blue. And, um, and you, that storm is being left behind. And here we can see the pier just fading out. We see the land, the hotels, the, all the civilization kind of gone away. And then we just sort of coast out into the ocean with, with blue skies, calm waters and it just gives a more peaceful feeling. So again, it tells that story of going from a very rough, kind of, kind of violent, uh, topsy-turvy thing going on to um, a nice, peaceful, serene thing. I added some audio there, just some stock audio to, uh, to sort of highlight that, but you can go in and do so much stuff with this, you know that. Uh, you can add audio, you can, you can work with the colors, and you can do some pretty cool things to really take a shot like that use pieces of it, use the whole thing, whatever, and it can tell a little story within your whole story. So anyway, that's just kind of a quick and easy, just happened to get a pretty cool shot there. I thought I'd go through it and, and break it down to, to show you all the different textures that can happen within one shot. Again, that was a motion lapse set up with an Osmo Pocket on a tripod. Took an hour, four second intervals. We got 30 seconds of footage and worked out pretty darn well. As always, any questions, you just want to talk drone or anything, ping me, Terry, at blackdogdroneops.com. Or, you know, I'm a mentor on the Indie Brigade. Just book a session. We'll get deeper into it. We'll talk about drones or whatever you need to know. So anyway, get in touch. Look forward to talking to you.